What is up everybody, Alan Wade back here with another video, a little under the weather, but I still need to give you guys a video because I think it's very, very useful and I actually wish I'd have made it like a, a week or two ago, but it's okay, better late than never. I'm gonna show you three tips that everybody should know starting off in embroidery and some of these tips, I think the machine should quite frankly come like this, but they don't. So I'm gonna show you three tips, tips that are gonna boost your embroidery on these commercial embroidery machines up to 1000%. Let's get into it. So we're just gonna dive straight into it with the MT1501. First tip, um, when embroidering on hoodies, right? Hoodies in particular, right? This is a small hoodie. You're gonna be embroidering on, like say when you do a run, you're gonna be doing small, medium, large, extra large, double XL, triple XL, sometimes even extra small. What you wanna pay attention to when you're designing when you're embroidering something on a hoodie is, you're generally embroidering either left chest or you're doing front, full front chest, right? When you're doing full front chest, what you gotta pay attention to is how you hoop, how you hoop your, um, your garment. And when I say hoop your garment, I don't mean how you hoop it on the bracket. I mean, actually it's both. It's how you hoop it on the bracket and how you insert it into the machine. Because you have to put your bracket on a certain way to slide into the machine you know it's you side up so basically what I'm trying to say is when you're doing a large design on a front chest right you're not gonna have any problems with the larger sizes but then when you get into large mediums and small that same large design might need to be shrunken down but if you don't want to shrink it down and you want to keep the same amount of real estate on that garment, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to hoop your garment backwards or hoop it upside down inside the machine. All right, I'm gonna tell you why in just a second. It's gonna make sense. When the machine articulates, this arm on the machine, your garment, typically we hoop it this way and we put it inside the machine with the neck facing inside the machine. Let me bring, give you guys a closer up on the machine. Imagine for a second that this hoodie is hooped already, right? It's hooped already, and um, the way you put it on to the embroidery machine would be you would put this, the neck part through here, and then you would hoop, you would uh, slide the, the both brackets of the arms in here. So it would be laying in the machine like this, right? So that you can embroider on a front chest. All right, so what's gonna happen is if you have a large design, the machine is going to need to go from right to left. And what's gonna keep the machine from going all the way left or all the way right is how big this neck part is, all right? So if you're doing an extra large sweatshirt, you're gonna have a larger neckline, right? If you're doing a small or medium or even a large, you're gonna have a smaller neck. So when your machine goes from right to left to embroider on the far left or the far right of the jersey, you're gonna lose registration. You're gonna lose registration. To prevent the machine from you losing registration, you wanna hoop the top part upside down so that the bracket that goes in here, because a certain bracket's supposed to go in here, a certain bracket's supposed to go in here. You hoop the bracket that's supposed to go in here on this side. Now I'm flipping my hoodie upside down so that now I can put it inside the machine this way. Does that make sense you guys? Now I'm putting it in the machine the waist with the waist in, right? And the neck part is on this side, right? So now when the machine goes to go from right to left, it has the whole body of the sweatshirt to travel and you won't lose registration. Now you ha also have to reverse your design in the machine. Let me show you how to do that. So this is the screen of the MT-1501 or the MT-1502 or your six head maybe. So you're gonna hit design set. See, see the, um, how my design is laid out. You can read it overbrook with the O. You're gonna hit, let me go back. You're gonna hit design set. You're gonna hit this button right here with the little F icon. And then you're going to, instead of it being the regular way, you're going to flip it, right? This way, all right? Not mirror, you're gonna flip it 180 degrees. Now watch what happens when I flip it 100. This is M0 and this is M180, meaning mirrored 180. You don't wanna do that. That's gonna make your text be backwards. 
I, do, I mistakenly did that before. You want to hit 180 degrees, not the M180. Hit 180 degrees. Okay. Now the design is backwards. Now when I put my my shirt in backwards, or my uh, or or yeah, it could be a shirt. It could be a hoodie. It could be a sweatshirt, right? Crew neck, whatever. You put it in backwards. Now the small part is down here. And when the machine needs to articulate all the way to the right and all the way to the left for this part, it's going to have no problems because the neck is all the way on this side versus the neck was on this side before of the machine. All right. Does that make sense? The neck was on this side, but now we put the neck on this side. So now the machine can go right and left and not lose registration. All right. So that's tip number one. I'm hoping that that was helpful and it made sense to all you guys. All right. Now we're going to move on to tip number two. Tip number two is a scenario based type of thing. All right. And it happened to me before. And sometimes you can um, not know what to do or not know how to align things back up. All right. So tip number two, scenario based, you're embroidering a design, something happens, you're embroidering on a cap because this is the most common time when this is going to happen. It can happen on flats too. You're embroidering something and you get a thread break or a needle break or your bobbin runs out and you need to change the bobbin. But your, your, say you, you say you're doing hats and your cap, the, the bobbin ran out at a point where the cap was all the way to the front and it's hard to get it out, right? It's hard to get it out. The only way to get it out is if you can scooch it back a little bit, right? Scooch the machine back a little bit or forward a little bit. Now, what's the problem with doing that? We don't want to do that because if you do that, now you lose registration. You lose the point where the machine last left off. So when you change the bobbin, you want to get this out of the way so that you can get the cap out or you can get the sweatshirt out, whatever case it might be. And you can comfortably change the bobbin right which this one needs to be changed comfortably change the bobbin put a new bobbin back in put it back in and get going again but how do you get going again when you just move this you just move this and it's not in the same exact spot well guess what if i press if you ever press this button right here right or that button right there that button right there accidentally and you want to get back to the point where the machine left off where the machine last started embroidering right last stopped embroidering all you got to do is hit this button right here and it's not doing it right now because i'm not embroidering but all you got to do is hit this button right here and that will take you to the point where the machine just stopped right you got a thread break the, the you got a needle break you got a you got a, a the, the bobbin stopped Anything that happens, you're going to get a T break. It's going to say T break, no matter what it is. When that happens, you can move this around all you want. You know, change the needle, change the thread, change the bobbin. After you're done, hit that button right there. The machine will move right back to where it left off. By the way, guys, if you are in the market to purchase a Rakoma MT-1501 or MT-1502, any six heads or anything like that, use my Rakoma affiliate link down in the description below to purchase your machine. Even if you're not ready to purchase and want to ask some questions, use my Rakoma affiliate link, fill it out, and an associate will be in touch with you to answer any questions that you have, no pressure, no obligations. And then when you're ready to purchase, you can go ahead and purchase. And the link would have been already used. Uh, the inquiry would have already came from my link, so I'll still get this small commission on that sale and it helps the channel out a whole lot. Thank you. Third and last tip that I think is very, very helpful and probably one of the most helpful, actually all of them are equally as helpful, but this one, I really think the machine should come like this, but they don't. This one is going to help you guys master caps and stop the problem, the flagging problem, the problem where the machine is going up and down. And if you didn't hoop it correctly, or even if you did hoop it correctly, sometimes it's going up and down. You hear clack, 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 flap, 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 flap. It's going to stop that problem altogether. And it's going to tremendously increase your, your hat output potential right here. All right. This is going to help you out a lot. Watch this. The machines, all the machines should come like this. Mine is already set up, but I'm going to show you guys how to set yours up. So first of all, you got to set your machine up for this. 
the I would set all my needles to this. So, you know, I'm on needle number two right now. Let me move to needle number one for whatever reason. All right. All right. So if your screen is like this, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit the needle button. All right. The screen changes. Then you're going to hit the 180 button. Now, when I hit the 180 button, the embroidery foot, right, the embroidery foot is going to come down and stay down. You got to be on this screen to do that. You hit the 180 button, the embroidery foot comes down and stays down. I'm going to hit it. And the foot came down and it stayed down. All right. Now is the point where you're going to adjust the foot. If you didn't adjust the foot, you're going to have a nice space between the plate and the foot. Right. I'm not going to adjust mine because mine is adjusted already, but I'm going to show you how to adjust your foot so it's closer to the plate. You want it, they say, uh, I've heard that you want it like, you want to be able to put like a credit card in between there, in between the plate and the foot, and that's the proper distance. I like to get it a little bit closer than a credit card, um, just, just, just a little slight distance off of the plate. What that does is that makes the foot comes down, hold the fabric in place, the needle goes through, needle comes out, then the foot comes up. And that's the, that's the uh, pattern that your embroidery happens in. Foot comes down, holds the fabric in place, needle goes through the foot, uh, does its thread thing, comes back up, foot comes back up. That happens real fast. Now when the foot is too far away, it goes down and it pushes down the fabric a little bit. Then the needle goes, penetrates the, the fabric and comes through. But if the foot is not pushing that fabric down, it's going to create a flapping effect. You want to avoid the flapping effect. All right, because that's what causes you to lose registration. Now you just slide this cover over, loosen up whatever needle you're going working on, loosen that up with a Phillips head screwdriver. Once you loosen that up this way, that's loosen, lefty loosey. Bring the foot down a little bit in the position that you want it to be in, and then tighten it back up in that lower, that new lower position, right? Then you go back to the screen. To bring the needle up, you have to hit that button right there to bring the needle back up. Let me hit it one, one time, and you guys are gonna see the needle come back up. All right, so that brought the needle all the way back up. All right, and I created a whole mess under there that I need to, yeah, clear out. All right, so boom, that brought the needle back up. All right, once again, to bring the needle down, you hit the 180, right? Let me hit the 180 real fast. Brings that down, leaves it there to bring it, and that's the 180 button that's actually on the screen. To bring it back up, you hit the 100 button. All right, and that brings it, takes it all the way back up. All right, so once you do that to all your needles, that way the needle will be able to, the foot, the embroidery foot, will be able to push the fabric down before the needle passes through and penetrates, and that will enable you to have better registration so that you don't lose registration, especially, this is key, when doing caps, your success rate with doing caps will go up 1,000%, I promise. So guys, I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you found it helpful. Those three tips right there really, really drastically boosted my success rate with embroidery. And I'm still learning things as I go along. And you're always gonna be learning things even years to come. When you get this machine, you gotta spend some time with it before you start taking on jobs. It's very, very crucial, very, very important to your, to, you know, not perfect it, but to kind of like get a good, confident grasp on the concept of embroidery before you start taking on work or before you start putting pressure on yourself when you don't really know how to use a machine. These tips are gonna help you get over that hump, but you're still gonna have to spend some time with your machine, take some scrap fabrics, mess up a little bit, figure out the tensions and stuff like that play around with the machine till you really, really kind of know what you're doing before you start taking on jobs. If this video was in fact helpful for you guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I see right now, I think we're at about, about a 70, 40% 
40% subscribed, 70% not subscribed. So I really like to raise those numbers and it will help the channel out a lot. So please, if you're watching the videos or even if it's your first time here, just hit the subscribe button to help me out, especially during the holiday times, guys. I appreciate it and thank you very much. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you for watching. Peace. Turn up that, crank it up. Why listen to the rest when you're rockin' with the best, baby?